Most financial advisors are gonna tell you that one of the first things you should do when saving for retirement is to max out your 401k. But in this video, I'm gonna share with you three reasons why that's probably not the best strategy. And I'm also gonna give you an alternative strategy that you've probably never heard of. If it's your first time here, I'm Maxwell McGuire and I teach personal finance through the lens of Austrian economics to help protect your savings from rampant inflation and out of control central banks. When it comes to 401k plans, my background is in auditing and I spent 10 years as a sole practitioner exclusively auditing 401k plans. During that time, I came to see many of the pitfalls of 401ks, which I'm gonna share in this video. The three main problems with 401ks that I'm gonna talk about are number one, taxes, number two, access and control, and number three, government confiscation. Let's get started. Now, when it comes to taxes, that was the reason you put your money into the 401k in the first place, right? For the tax benefit. And that's what most experts will tell you to contribute to your 401k. It goes something like this. The IRS is so kind to let you put in this up to this limit into your 401k that you better take advantage of it. And while it's true that you are not taxed on the contributions to the plan, they are pre-tax, you will be taxed on that money when you eventually withdraw it. So you are not actually avoiding any tax, you are just delaying the calculation of tax to a later date. Now, you might be saying to yourself, okay, thanks Max, I know how a 401k works, but I'm gonna be in a lower tax bracket when I retire. Well, let's think about that assumption for a moment. With the federal government running multi-trillion dollar deficits, federal debt spiraling out of control, we all know that social security is going bankrupt. What has to happen to tax rates? They either have to go up or government has to fix its spending problem, which we all know is not going to happen. Governments will continue to spend and they will continue to pay for it through higher taxes and inflation, i.e. the hidden tax. Or you might be saying to yourself, well, I'm gonna be in a lower income bracket when I retire and that's why my taxes will be less. Well, back to my first point, even if you are making less income, if tax rates go up, you could still be paying a higher tax rate. And secondly, do you really wanna bank on the fact that you're gonna be making less in retirement? I don't know about you, but I'd like to have a successful career, make some good investments, start a business, and hopefully be making more in retirement, whatever that means these days, as many people are working until later in life for going a traditional retirement. And I've talked to many people who have found out the hard way that their taxes actually haven't gone down when they retired. Now, this is gonna sound kind of harsh, but I think that we need to start calling this idea that you are going to save on taxes by putting your money into a 401k what it actually is and that is a lie and this is something that was tough for me to come to grips to as a cpa and someone who's been conditioned to believe that 401ks are the greatest thing since sliced bread i think that a lot of times we get so focused on the immediate tax benefit that we fail to think through the long-term implications of our financial decisions one thing to consider regarding 401ks is that they are a government program. And as with many other government schemes, there is usually an immediate benefit to lure you in, often done under the guise of helping you or solving some problem. And ironically, it's a problem that the government itself created. And of course, when it comes to 401ks, the problem is onerous taxation. But as you will see in my next two points, it is actually a trap. Now on to number two, which is access and control. When you put your money into a 401k, not only are you delaying the tax calculation, but you are essentially locking that money away for 20, 30, 40 years, or however long it is until you reach retirement age of 59 and a half. There are some exceptions to this, such as hardship withdrawals, or if your plan allows loans, but the rules around these are very strict and limited. And if you break one of these rules, not only will you have to pay tax on that money, but you have to pay penalties as well. In the case of required minimum distributions, the government actually tells you when you have to take the money out and pay tax on it. And of course, there are many other people who benefit from your money while it's in there. The custodian, the third party administrator, investment advisor, various other service providers to the plan, they are all getting fees that are being charged to your account. The 401k industry is a multi-trillion dollar industry. And believe me, Wall Street and the big banks love the steady flow of passive funds that come in through 401k plans. Which brings me to another point regarding access and control. 
you are only allowed to invest in the limited number of mutual funds that your plan sponsor selects for the plan. Not to mention that most participants select the default investment option or equally split their investments between the options, hoping that they'll be okay because they're diversified. As a small aside here, I'd like to talk about the difference between saving and investing. Many people talk about saving for their retirement in their 401k, but that's not actually what they're doing. Saving by definition is putting your money into something that has little to no risk of loss. Whereas most people who are putting their money in their 401k are putting it into stock mutual funds or the stock market, which is investing. And that is fine as long as you're aware of what you're doing. But you have to understand that investing comes with a large risk of loss, despite what you may have been told that stocks only go up. And of course, with the 401k plan, that risk of loss falls directly on you. On to problem number three, which is government confiscation. Now, you may have heard rumors before about the government taking over 401ks or IRAs. And most financial pundits will tell you that these are just crazy conspiracy theories and that the government has no intention of coming after your retirement money. But let me ask you, after the past two years, how many things that were supposedly crazy conspiracy theories have become true? Quite a few, I think. Consider the mandates and restrictions that we have on us now. Many of these were wild conspiracy theories just a year ago. Something else you need to understand is that from the government's point of view, the money in your 401k is not yours. It's partially theirs because they've been so kind to allow you to put it in there without paying tax on it. So to them, it represents a large pool of unpaid tax, which also makes it the lowest hanging fruit. And with multi-trillion dollar deficits and no appetite on either side of the aisle to curtail spending, the government is going to have to find new and creative ways to pay for their fiscal irresponsibility. The government has already stolen from Social Security. What makes you think they won't steal from your 401k? I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just being realistic. I went through a long period of time myself where I didn't want to believe this, but I'm afraid it's just a matter of time. If you shouldn't be putting your money into a 401k, then where should you be putting it? As I've talked about before on this channel, it's always a good idea to put some of your savings into physical precious metals, gold and silver. It also makes sense to keep an emergency fund in cash in after-tax accounts. But when it comes to long-term savings or savings for retirement, what you really want to do is get your money into the best tax bracket there is, and that's the 0% tax bracket. Now, there are two main ways to do this. One is the Roth IRA, which I'll talk about in some other videos. The second strategy is the one I mentioned at the beginning of the video that you may have never heard of. And this is called the Infinite Banking Concept, or IBC. I'll be diving into the details of IBC in future videos, but for now, understand that it uses dividend paying whole life insurance as the ideal savings vehicle to accumulate tax-free wealth and still have access to your capital, which allows you to become your own banker as written about by Nelson Nash, who brought this idea to the forefront and was a student of Austrian economics. Now, many people have been saving through whole life policies for hundreds of years, but he is really the one who put this together into a cohesive system and tied it into the philosophy of Austrian economics. Unlike 401ks, which have only been around for a little over 40 years, life insurance has been around for over 200 years, and it's not a creature of the tax code, which couldn't be changed at any time by the whims of politicians. Full disclosure, as of the time of recording of this video in January 2022, I am not selling life insurance, nor am I an authorized IBC practitioner. However, by the time you're watching this, I might be. Look down below for some links in the description for further information, or if you would like to consult with an authorized IBC practitioner. If you search around online, no doubt you will find many articles poo-pooing this concept, including from people like Dave Ramsey, who calls IBC a scam. But what I will do in future videos is show how their arguments are actually a caricature of IBC and do not represent all of the real benefits. To summarize what I've talked about in this video, with respect to 401ks, the problems are number one, taxes. You were told to put your money in the 401k because of the tax benefit, but in all actuality, what you are doing is delaying the calculation of the tax to a time which your taxes are most likely to be higher, not lower. Therefore, the whole premise of the 401k is based on a lie. Number two, access and control. 
what you are essentially doing is locking up your money for 20, 30, 40 years while many other people benefit from your capital besides you. In addition, you are limited in your investment options and putting your savings into significant risk in a heavily manipulated stock market. Number three, government confiscation. Governments see your 401k as low hanging fruit and it's better to find ways to get your money out of the 401k into 0% tax brackets while you still can. The infinite banking concept on the other hand allows you to accumulate tax-free interest, gives you access to your capital, and best of all, it's outside of the banking system, is not a creature of the tax code, and it's paid out by life insurance companies who have been around for hundreds of years and are obligated to pay you through contract. I'm gonna be doing many more videos on IBC and other Austrian approved investing and saving strategies. If you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.